scheduled the repair person to come over and fix the machine. Um, thankfully, while um, while we thought the machine was broken, the landlord offered to wash a load of laundry for me. So I took her up on that offer. She washed them and folded them nicely. That was nice of her, you know. Um, it turns out one of the roommates of this house uh, just turned off the water for some reason. Um, with the water going to the washing machine. So the machine wasn't really broken. I don't think there was any reason to turn off the water. Oh well. Um, not too long ago, it was like a few days ago maybe, four days ago-ish. Um, it was really snowy outside actually. So here's a video of that. The snow has melted though. Um, went for a walk in the park uh, yesterday. Uh, it was nice. A high of plus 14 degrees Celsius. As you can see, the ice on the river has melted. Yeah, so I found out the path along the river um, was one way path because of COVID. Only supposed to walk one way. So to encourage social, social distancing, I guess. So I didn't realize that I was walking the wrong way. Fuck. No, oh, I felt pretty dumb. Um, yeah, there's a little grocery haul that I did today. Um, I think it's fairly healthy. Three kinds of salad mixes. Sweet kale, sesame ginger, and avocado, cheddar ranch, and a bag of sugar snap peas. And then from right to left we have three Greek yogurts, blueberry, key lime, and cherry. Now, just, uh, I'm trying to get off sweets. I've been eating so much uh, high sugar food uh, foods lately. Black licorice, butter tarts, chocolate bars, Cadbury, um, caramel filled chocolate eggs. But um, it's just a bit too much. Uh, starting today, I am trying to uh, wean down on the sweets. That's one of the reasons, apart from uh, them being on sale, that I bought the yogurts. The yogurts are sweet, but somewhat healthy. Greek yogurt contains a uh, decent amount of protein. Um, that's good. It's a uh, somewhat healthy replacement for the high sugar processed foods that I was eating. I'm just gonna tuck in this chair. Okay. Now, I'm gonna talk about NFTs. Okay. So, a lot of people have been talking about NFTs lately. So, what is an NFT? Well, I'm just learning about that now myself. So, I'm not an expert yet, but I don't know if I'll be an expert on NFTs, but... Um, so, fungible is... means inter interchangeable. So... Um, Non-fungible means that it's unique and you can't replace it with something else. So, what I just read on the website, theverge.com, is that uh, Bitcoins are fungible because you can replace one for another, but you can't do that with NFTs. Basically, an NFT provides proof of ownership of a digital file. A file could be um, a digital image, song, something like that. I'm not sure what else, maybe you can tell me uh, what that um, being said, it doesn't mean that uh, you are the only individual who can legally um, have a copy of that uh, image or song. You're the only one who has that NFT legally, but um, for instance, you can uh, get an NFT for a digital image of a dog, but someone could take a screenshot of that. But you are the only one with the NFT for the image of that dog. Well, that makes sense. A remarkable example of this is uh, Beeple. Or his situation. Beeple is a professional name for um, of Mike Winkleman. He's a digital artist who, maybe until recently, or maybe he's still doing it, has put out one piece of digital art for every, every day for 13 and a half years. Okay, so it 
it was part of a project to improve his artwork. So, I'm getting a little off topic maybe, but I just thought it was interesting and maybe something you could use if you wanted to improve um, a skill set of some kind of yours. Um, I know I recently uh, said that you should not publish content, in my opinion, you should not publish content every day unless you've already quit your day job and you're financially stable, but there are different strategies you can use. So, uh, people recently sold an NFT for nearly $70 million US. The NFT was uh, a collage of his digital artwork. Um, so I find this NFT thing very uh, interesting. And uh, for a long time, I found the fact that people will pay a lot of money for rare sneakers or cards like um, magic cards, Pokemon cards, baseball cards, remarkable. Uh, I'll start with Magic the Gathering cards. In case you didn't know, Magic the Gathering is a war game. You play with cards. There are mythical creatures like goblins and sorceresses on the cards and they have different attributes that uh, make them arguably better or worse than uh, other cards. I had a small Magic, magic the Gathering uh, deck at one point, but I never played the game. Uh, but I knew there was a card called Black Lotus in Magic the Gathering. Black Lotus was a powerful card, uh, much better than the average card. But at the end of the day, of course, it was like an illustration on a piece of paper. But, you know, Black Lotus could sell for a lot of money uh, pri privately. I mean, um, you know, like uh, somebody who... Uh, I'm not talking about a store here, or maybe a store could sell it, but you know, I'm usually talking about somebody who had pulled it from a deck, like an, an average individual kind of thing, not the actual company who made Magic the Gathering. Okay, anyways, here is a Black Lotus card for going for uh, $4,150 Canadian on eBay. As you can see here, uh, they can go for a lot more than that too. Here is a pack of Magic the Gathering cards I found on Best Buy's website for $5.97 Canadian for a pack of 15 cards. Okay, so um, the way it would work is you would buy a pack of Magic the Gathering cards and you would have a chance of getting the Black Lotus in your deck. Of course, the point of buying Magic the Gathering Packs is not necessarily to get a Black Lotus. There are other excellent cards, and uh, you could buy a pack expecting uh, just to get some regular cards to play with. The chance you would get a Black Lotus in your deck was very small. Uh, Black Lotus is a very rare card, so you couldn't just uh, buy a Black Lotus directly from the company Magic the Gathering or a store that sold Magic the Gathering cards. You could draw it from a deck where you would get it at random or you could trade somebody for it. You know, it seemed a little bit silly um, that uh, a Black Lotus, uh, a, a piece of uh, cardboard with an illustration on it uh, would basically, uh, they basically had the same production cost uh, as all the other Magic the Gathering cards could be sold for uh, so much money. However, you could ask, did it serve the function of making it more likely um, for one to win a game of Magic the Gathering? Yes, it did. Um, was it easy to get the card? No, it wasn't. So after thinking about that, I actually thought it was reasonable for someone to be able to sell it for a lot of money. Or and uh, something similar was happening in the world of sneakers. A regular pair of sneakers uh, might cost about $30 to $250. You know, what do you think? Is that about right? But here is what looks to me to be a pair of rare um, Nike Jordans for uh, $13,127 Canadian. Um, 
some sneakers with uh, certain colorways were more rare because the companies making the sneakers would make less of them. So just like the Magic the Gathering cards, um, I initially was like, these sneakers selling for a huge amount of money are basically the same as all the others. There's no reason um, for me to believe that they're more durable or have better functionality than the others. They're just different colors. But then you could say, are they cooler? And you could argue yes, because the design does look cool. Or can you get them without paying big money? Um, no, you can't. You know, so that would make sense in a way uh, for as to why uh, people would pay so much money for them. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the items I mentioned are rare and difficult to get uh, without, you know, without paying a lot of money for them. But in the case of NFTs or digital art, uh, you can easily get the good and uh, get it for free, or oftentimes you can. For example, if there's an NFT of a piece of digital art of a bear, uh, someone who does not own the NFT of, of that um, piece of digital art of the bear can take a screenshot of it, and then they can have it for free. So, uh, you could say that it's silly for someone uh, to purchase uh, NFT of a bear image then, but that's not necessarily true because uh, the individual who bought the bear NFT could have sold it for a huge profit. So you could say, hey, you're dumb because I took a screenshot of a bear image to and it didn't cost me anything and you paid uh, $10 million for it. But the individual can say a week later, hey, I sold the bear image for $15 million. I made a $5 million profit. What was that about you saying that I was dumb again? Oh, sorry about that. What's that? Wow, well, looking sound. So it's pretty neat. You can have a file, um, and basically everybody else has got it for free, but you paid money for it, and you're not necessarily a dummy for paying money for it. Of course, you could lose money from it if nobody is willing to buy it for at least the amount that you paid for it, but still. Oh, so I had a fantastic uh, dream last night that I'd like to tell you about. Uh, the dream uh, sort of, uh, I guess, embodies all of the desires that I have for my future. If that makes sense, embodies um, my dream. I was living in my parents' basement, and I was thinking about purchasing uh, a spot and uh, in a seminar for uh, self-development. Uh, the problem was with uh, was that the price was a whopping nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Some very trustworthy individuals on the website told me that the seminar would change my life. So I knew that whatever the cost of the seminar, uh, it would be worth it. Apparently, they had read some books on self-development, which I recommend. Uh, you can get the books off Amazon for about 40 bucks. And um, books on self-development in general, I guess. Um, to come up with that kind of cash, I had sold almost everything I had and maxed out two credit cards and uh, picked up an extra job at Burger King uh, as a line cook, but, and because of the stress, the number of times I was masturbating uh, per day went fucking sky high. Um, I was on the website of the self-development company, and I noticed that there was a timer beside the buy now button for the seminar I was thinking about taking. Uh, apparently the cost of the, of the seminar for 19000 $999.99 was about to expire. I was looking at a discounted price and after the timer expired in, in three minutes, the price would go to the regular price of $21,999.99. I 
of course I clicked the buy button uh, buy now button quickly so I didn't miss out on that fantastic deal so I attended the self-development sem seminar and I learned about how to suck less in life uh, one thing led to another and my dream uh, kind of skipped ahead a bit and uh, I ended up using what I learned uh, from the self-development program to uh, get myself a, a beautiful wife uh, you know she turned heads on the street and guys would stutter when they talked to her you know so um, I'm talking about a gorgeous face uh, around but an athletic body and stuff so I was at a big house with a big outdoor pool and a guest house in the backyard uh, in my dream I was on vacation with my gorgeous wife uh, somewhere in California I think I just placed my or so um uh, I just placed my order on the balcony of a busy restaurant where the servers wore ties and nice blouses and uh, I walked over to the railing and I was looking at uh, the beautiful vineyard below uh, juicy purple grapes were glistening in the sun along perfectly straight rows of grapevines the sky was blue I remember thinking about some less uh, fortunate uh, inner city kids or kids from less uh, developed countries struggling due to not having much money and I thought to myself it's their own goddamn fault that they didn't have a beautiful wife because if they had taken a self-development seminar like I did they would have they would have had the tools they needed to uh, fuck a beautiful woman in the pool uh, just like I did you could argue that uh, they didn't have um, you know nineteen thousand dollars to spend on a course over nineteen thousand dollars but did they try selling their kidneys on a black market right I know what you're thinking it's like a terrible thing to uh, get rid of your body parts for uh, such a cause but it worked out for Robocop uh, he didn't sell his body parts of course but he lost his arms and legs and he went on to have a very uh, fulfilling career in law enforcement um, you know, the police are getting a lot of flack right now, but if you look at the inspiration that has come from Robocop as a role model, I mean, not good. So, the problem is, as the saying goes, with some people's kids can't really get their act together. Man, I'm just joking. I didn't mean to uh, disrespect underprivileged kids. And thank you for watching.